that there is this person who really annoys or even angers me sometimes. What bothers me about this is to know that it's not him, but I, who is causing myself to suffer. But why can't I let it go? Why am I attached to suffering? That's the question, right? That's the, that's the curious truth. It's a profound question. It's not something that normally people ask, why do I suffer? And they say, well, you're making me suffer, and that's, that's the problem. And the curious thing about suffering is there are, there are different levels to our understanding of it, which I've talked about before. I can go into it here. I think talking about suffering will probably give you some background, better background to answer this question. I think briefly I can say, before I explain the means, the simple answer to your question is because that's not the practice. The practice is not to let go of suffering. The practice is to observe reality. Uh, the result of observing reality closely, objectively, clearly, is to understand reality for what it is. The result of understanding reality for what it is is letting go. So it's a, it's, just, it's a progress. See, most people understand suffering to be uh, a feeling that you get from time to time. And so they try to find a way to avoid the feeling. Their understanding of suffering is that it's, it's specific. You know, this or that experience um, causes suffering and so their means of escaping suffering is to run away from the experience, to chase it away, to blame other people, blame external um, events and situ circumstances and, and entities outside of themselves or in, of course in their own bodies, even in their own minds. Blame those things and try their best to avoid them. This is how ordinary people deal with suffering. You have a back, you have a headache, take a pill. You have a backache, get a massage. You have a stomach ache, take uh, some antacid. Eventually, a spiritual person, person with a little bit of wisdom, at, at least, will see that this isn't effective. This isn't. Um, a viable solution to the problem. Uh, eventually there are certain sufferings that you can't run away from, you can't avoid, you can't be free from simply by chasing away. Old age, sickness, death, um, even extreme trauma, lo the loss of, of a loved one, loss of wealth, loss of health, loss of loss or sadness or, or any kind of, of great suffering will make a person realize that this isn't a viable uh, solution that these, these states of suffering you can't avoid so that there has to be a better way to be able to actually deal with the suffering this is what often leads people to the spiritual life and, and for us this is what leads us to come and meditate. So the, th the third, this leads to the third understanding of suffering as a quality inherent in, uh, in reality in the same way that fire is hot, uh, experience is a cause for suffering. And there's, we don't really have a word, I can't think of a word for it, but it's, it's like static electricity, it has, or potential energy. There's no energy in it, but it has the potential. So a rock that's up high doesn't seem to have any energy, it's not moving, but it has potential energy, because if you push it, it exhibits extreme amounts of energy as it falls to the earth below. Um, so reality has this kind of static electricity or this potential for, for causing suffering. So we say fire is hot, but it's not burning you. Right? So when we say that, that experience is suffering, 
um, we don't mean that it hurts you, I mean that it has the potential to hurt you. And that which causes that suffering is craving. So the cause of all of our suffering is craving. So the third, the third is this realization, this observation that leads you to see that the reason that you suffer is not really because you experience the th this or that, but it's because, um, well, the third stage is it's because nothing can satisfy you. It's because, or it's the realization that all of reality is contributing to your suffering because you're partial to certain things and, and, and partial against certain things. It's the realization that that's, an Im that's not correct. That's, that's not, that's, that's due simply to ignorance. And it's the realization that all, um, really all experience is the same, that pain is really the same as pleasure. Um, good memories are the same as bad memories. They're still just memories. It's, it's really only our uh, judgment and our incorrect judgment that points to certain things as being stable, as being pleasant, as being controllable, and therefore leading to expectations and ultimately disappointment when we don't get what we want. That's the third, which leads ultimately to a realization that of the truth of suffering. And that's what, what leads you to let go. So the third and the fourth are kind of like one and the same. It's the path and then the, the goal. When you finally get it, the fourth one is this moment, this sort of gestalt, I guess, or this, this epiphany that you have when you realize that nothing is worth clinging to. When you realize that, that everything is like this. So the third is the practice of observing and, and investigating and seeing that the things that you thought were pleasant and the cause for, for happiness and, and contentment are actually making you more discontent, more unhappy, more unpleasant, more bitter and, and, and mean as a person. And the fourth one is this final realization that absolutely everything is... Uh, not worth clinging to, and, and it's, so that's the moment where the mind lets go, and that's the, the realization of the freedom, the freedom from suffering, which we call nirvana. So, why you can't let go, I would say, if I was going to be kind of smarmy about it, I would say because you haven't done the work, you haven't done what is required to let go. Letting go is not something you do. Um, in fact, the irony there is that you're talking about forcing yourself to let go, which are opposites. Right? Letting go is, it means letting come, actually. Letting go means really stopping to force things. Once you can do that, you'll be free from suffering. So, so the, the, the question is really a paradox, or something like a paradox, where you're asking, why can't I force myself to let go? When you say, right, why can't I let go? you don't let go. The letting go occurs because you see things clearly. There's just no clinging because you would have no reason to cling. Why are, the, the, the question as to why we're attached to suffering is, is more interesting. Uh, and this is what's curious about this. Why the heck are we um, attached to that, what is, that which is suffering? And this is the key to the essence of Buddhism is that it's ignorance. We aren't always attached to suffering. It's more like we are being tossed about in the ocean. And so sometimes we go this way, sometimes we go that way. Sometimes we can be really good. Sometimes people are just naturally good. They're going in that direction. Sometimes people are naturally horrible, evil, mean creatures. We go up and down, back and forth, but randomly. So, um, but it's all based on ignorance. Once you know, then you, be, you, steer, you become steered in a specific direction, and that's towards peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering. So knowledge is something that directs the mind, just like the captain directs the, the ship. Without a captain, without mindfulness, the, the boat just is tossed to the waves, tossed by the waves to the current. To the, um, so, so the, the it, it, it's just 
you could say kind of by chance it's where you find yourself or it's one of the currents is uh, attachment to suffering based on ignorance 